we're told that if we don't get an A on our test or paper, then we have failed. We're told that if we don't get into a top university, then we have failed. But what happens when you follow those rules to the letter and when you graduate from college only to realize that you have no idea what you want to do? What happens when all your dreams fall apart and you feel lost? In the winter of 2019, I was reading a 22nd paragraph from the history book about the society for spreading of literacy among Georgians. That's when I truly realized how education is the most effective tool we can use to change the world. But in education is not without stress, is it? It's fair to say that everyone in this room has been nervous about a test in school at least once, and honestly, it's the same for me. In my case, stress was caused by several reasons, including upcoming tests, grades, unfortunate attempts to memorize weird words, responsibilities, training for goals, and even what others thought of me. Nervousness can cause panic attacks, social anxiety, OCD, headaches, etc. And all those factors can affect the quality of learning, so it can be an obstacle. I, like many of my peers, I was lucky that my family never forced me to study anything against my will or judge my grades, and thank them for that. But I knew their expectations were high, and the standards I set for myself were even higher. My parents divorced when I was four years old, so I've lived with my mother ever since. She's an educated, kind, intelligent, and a very successful woman who has always been my role model. She and all her family friends were in the computer science field, so I tried to learn a few things about it. I was quite good at it, actually, but as it turned out, it really wasn't my thing. I preferred a sheet to a computer, real paint to colorful pixels, and ink to a rackety keyboard. I spent so much time learning something to make others happy. I stayed up late every night doing things I didn't want to do, and before I went to sleep, I thought to myself what would happen if it didn't work out. A year passed in such a way that I had no time to find my own voice. Over the years, I've said boundaries to myself that have done me a lot of good, but they also made me a little lonely. According to human personality theory, there are two types of people, extroverts and introverts. Extroverts tend to manifest a more talkative, outgoing, energetic behavior, whereas introverts display a reflective and reserved demeanor. I'm more on the introverted side, so I prefer to deal with all my problems alone. Because of that, I didn't tell anyone about my struggle. And guess what? It didn't work out. I was weary and tired out. I acknowledged that this was my life, not someone else's. That's when I finally decided that the cycle had to end. I had to live this life, but the consequences affected nobody more than me. No one would be more pleased than I'd be hurt. On the other hand, your well-being and mental health matter more than anything. Besides, the pressure to do well in school can be overwhelming. Learning shouldn't be this stressful, but it is. I've tried many ways to overcome stress, and from my experience, I like to highlight some of the most effective ways that work the best for me. Listening to music or taking a walk may help you cool off, but it is it's temporary. My favorite thing is changing the environment by going to somewhere else, like the coffee shop or the library, or talking to someone about the problem. This could be a family member, a friend, or a professional. Today, with the help of technology and social networks, it's much easier than ever to find people or communities that will listen to you. So after I realized I was not on the right path to finding what I truly wanted, I started transforming my life. In this way, one of the best things I did was opening up with my family and friends, telling them about my bother and distress didn't make me feel weak or ashamed at all. It honestly made me feel more free and confident. Dealing with this problem brought me very close to a dear friend of mine who, as it turned out, was also going through the same thing. What I'm trying to say is that when you come out of a nutshell, you see that there are a lot of people in this world with similar problems, and even more who have overcome them. It's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to be stressed. It's okay to show emotions. Believe in yourself and your abilities. After many attempts, I realized that stress doesn't go away effortlessly. It's a natural human reaction after all. So I've learned to live with it. And not just to live with it, but also use it to my advantage. It took some time and practice, but I finally came to the situation where I developed the ability to think quickly, work under pressure, and make decisions. Formal debates is also what helped me learn to manage my stress and emotions. On the other hand, it made me stop listening to the voices of others and find my own voice in this noise. I can't help others by doing what I hate. When you learn for yourself, you're able to benefit people better. This is real life, and with real lives comes barriers and difficulties. It's complicated and it's baffling, but it's worth fighting, learning, and changing. Just don't be too harsh with yourself. Because I know there will always be people who don't like me or agree with me, but their opinion doesn't matter as long as I'm happy with myself. Enjoy learning and don't feel limited. I believe in myself, that's why. 
I learn for myself. Thank you.